We we'll begin in Abuja, where the Presidential Election Petition Court is holding its last pre-hearing session. The Presidential Election Petitions Court has consolidated the three petitions filed by political parties and their presidential candidates. Chairman of the Tribunal, Justice Harunat um, Samani, made this known while presenting the pre-hearing report on petitions by the Labour Party, the People's Democratic Party, and Allied People's Movement petition. The court has given three weeks to the Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Albi, to prove their case. Now, to ensure a speedy hearing of the Labour Party's petition, there will be no oral examination of witnesses, but adoption of witness statements. For a star witness, 30 minutes will be used for evidence in chief, while 20 minutes will be for cross-examination and five minutes for re-examination. At Monday's proceedings, the court dismissed the application filed by the PDP seeking to televise the day-to-day -day proceedings of the court. In a unanimous ruling, the court held that no, um, not televising the proceedings does not amount to a lack of fair hearing on the part of the petitioners. Let's get more updates on today's proceedings from TVC News Judiciary Correspondent Celestine Area. So, Lesina, um, it's the last day of the pre-hearing. Um, you, you, we've had, you've spoken, you know, extensively for every day of of, of the hearing, of the pre-hearing. Well, talk to us about what um, exactly happened in court today. Well, precious, the court today gave us a report of all the sections that had when it commenced pre-hearing session on the 8th of May. So today the court concluded the pre-hearing session and produced its report. And part of that report was also made us known that the court has consolidated the three petitions filed by the Labour Party, the PDP and the APM. Although the APC and the uh, president-elect objected to consolidating the petitions because they had said that it should not do justice to their case and some important issues in these petitions may be lost. But consolidating these petitions together is in line with section 50 of the first shared, the first shared I beg your pardon, of the Electoral Act, where um, if issues resulting from a particular election or return is being challenged, the, the tribunal or the court shall so, but uh, counsel to the APC and the president elected shall is not compulsory that the court should use its discretion. But the court today consolidated the petition and rolled out how the trial will commence by giving out timetable. The court adjourned to 30th of May, which is next week Tuesday, for commencement of proper hearing in this petition. And the court said the hearing will take place day to day, save for Sunday. So Monday to Saturday, every day from 30th of May, proceedings will be heard. And today the court also uh, ruled out the issues agreed by parties when they had the pre-hearing session. Most other parties said that they would need interpreters and they would not be objecting to certified true copies of documents that was duly certified by INEC. And also they would adopt or rely on pleadings in their evidences. So these were the issues that was conversed in the court today and the court has adjourned to 30th of May to commence proper hearing. And I want to stay on the consolidated petitions because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what exactly that means. Um, now that the petitions of the three political parties, that's the Labour Party, the APM and the PDP have been consolidated, um, wh where, where does that leave um, their petition and what, what happens from here? Well, what it means is that because the, the issues raised by these petitioners are same, and they are also challenging, same in the sense that is it has to do with one subject matter, which is the 20, 20, 25th February presidential election. So if they are all challenging one issue or the other relating to that particular election, the court can, ju can do justice by consolidating the petitions together. Still, no party will be prejudiced because justice will be delivered in these petitions. And we know that the, uh, the electoral act stipulates 180 days. And if we go by calculation from when pre-hearing started, uh, the 180 80 days will expire or elapse on 16th of September and considering also uh, section 18 of the Electoral Act first schedule, the pre-hearing session of 14 days elapsed today and the court also made it known that because of the time and which is also yes backed by law, 
looking at section 41, subsection 3 of the first schedule of the Electoral Act, witnesses that will be called, they would not be given oral evidences. They would only be guided by their counsel to adopt their written statement. This is because different petitioners have different number of witnesses to call. The PDP said they have over 100 witnesses to call. The Labour Party said they have 50 witnesses to call to their defence or to prove their case, while the APM said they have one witness to call. But the Labour Party had actually asked the court or told the court that they will be needing seven weeks to conclude their case, which is calling the witnesses who will be identifying various evidences they want to use and prove the case. But the tribunal made it known or the court made it known that if the Labour Party is given seven weeks, the court will not have time to deliver its judgment. So the court narrowed it down to three weeks and also three weeks were also given to the PDP who said they have 50 witnesses to call and one day was given to the APM because the APM said they have just one witness to call. But the APM's case will know it's an issue of placeholder where they are challenging the fact that there was not supposed to be a placeholder in the position of the vice president elect before the, his name was announced, saying that there is no provision of that in law. So Labour Party, uh, APM's issue is just one particular subject matter. So these were the issues of uh, the resolution of the court today that are joined to 30th of May for proper hearing. Mm. Thank you so much, um, Celestina, for um, that update. Uh, we'll be waiting till 30th of May, um, just a day after the inauguration for resumption of um, full uh, substantive proceedings across correspondent there, Celestina Area Life for Ross in Abuja. Now, the Nigerian Political Science Association has commended the Independent National Electoral Commission and other stakeholders for the improvements witnessed in the 2023 elections. At the end of a two-day meeting, the group also commended INEC for adopting technology in conducting the polls. They are advocating further reforms in the electoral system to include more citizens' engagement and an improved political party system. Politicization of appointment and recruitment of key staff of INEC, such as national commissioner, research electoral commissioner, ad hoc staff, ad hoc staff, including vice chancellors. Qualification and appointment of INEC chairman, our recommendation. More, pro, more rigorous process in the appointment of annex and key officers to ensure that there is no political interference. Introduce background check, CSO scrutiny, checklist, and guidelines. Have clear criteria for appointment. People with proven competence deserve to be appointed to annex. There has been dramatic improvement from 2011, and all Nigerians will agree. One, in terms of outcome of election approximating the will of the people. In fact, when you cannot have a perfect election, but the standard language is that election should approximate the will of the people. We have also increased acceptance of outcome. And in many instances, losers admitting they have lost and congratulating the winners. We're staying with politics. A coalition of South-South women, uh, women groups under the ages of South-South women compatriots have threatened to hit the streets in protest if the All Progressives Congress does not renounce the endorsement of Senator Gotwil Akbabio for the position of president of the Senate. A spokesperson for the coalition, Ima Obong, stated that they are not in support of their party's choice and they are hopeful the APC will have a rethink. National Assembly at this point in time needs intelligent, vibrant, and focused leader. The nation is presently at its lowest, and this is not the time to play with its destiny. This is the time for the Red Chamber to have men and women who focus and mission is to rescue the nation. We don't care about the religion status of the person coming on board. But provided the person is intelligent and responsible to drive the 10th Senate to its desired heart, religion and ethnicity should not be focused of getting a leader that will lead the Senate, but capacity and capability. And let's turn to Imo State, where Governor Hope Uzodima is still receiving endorsement from different stakeholders as preparations continue for the November governorship election. The latest is coming from his group of friends in Owe zone, who 
who say they are totally committed to ensure his mandate is renewed. And TVC's Prince Obar reports. It may be an evening of celebration among some friends of Governor Zadima from Oweri Zone, but more important to them is the re-election of a man they say has put the state on the map of development. For them, re-electing Governor Zadima will further accelerate development in Oweri Zone, as well as strengthen the Charter of Equity already put in place. He doesn't even consider where he comes from. Back in the days when he was a senator, he wasn't working as a senator of Olu. He worked as Imo senator. I'm not worried because I know he is going to have an understanding with us. The governor has, I believe, more friends in Oweri than he does in Olu. Especially on the wedding zone, because mostly the wedding zone is the hope of the governor. That we should all try and put hand together to make sure we achieve our end. Elsewhere in Ngopala local government area, these APC chieftains organized a reception in honor of opposition members who joined their party in order to achieve Governor Zodimar's re election. They joined us because of testimonies of performances in the state. And they are of the opinion and conclusion that the man who is driving this change in Imo State and who is setting the examples in the Southeast needs to be encouraged, needs to be supported. We are here just for one reason, and that reason is to say to all of us who just joined APC, thank you for coming to help in the re-election bid of our performing government. These APC leaders are happy that their party is gathering momentum in Imo State and Southeast region because of Uzodima's visible achievements within three and a half years in office. Prince Uba, TVC News. Worry. And about a week to the inauguration of Bola Tinubu as president of Nigeria, United States President Joe Biden has sent a nine-member delegation to attend the event on 29th of May. According to a statement on the White House website, U.S. Secretary of Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Forge, will lead the delegation. Other members of the delegation are U.S. Embassy Shaji Defer in Abuja, David Green, Sydney Kamlaga Dove, Under Secretary of Commerce for International Trade, uh, Marisa Lago, among others. And meanwhile, plans are on the way here in Nigeria to ensure a smooth transition process next week, Monday. Speaking on TVC News program, Countdown to Inauguration, Chairman of the Transition Council, Bos Mustafa, says the team is ready and security operatives are on standby, but to forestall any break of law and order, any breakdown of law and order. Uh, we are putting every processes in place, uh, the security apparatus, uh, the armed forces, the lead agency for uh, civil uh, security is the Nigerian police. Uh, they are putting up everything that ought to be put in place to ensure that we have a seamless transition of power.